Hey guys, check it out. We're going to be looking here at Serato 1.9.6 beta. Um, never mind the fact that it's a beta because that's not really what we're going to do here. Really what I'm going to do is kind of go over Serato and uh, be a bit more detailed about what you see on the screen for you new guys that are looking at Serato, maybe think about switching over. So let me get right into it here. We're going to take a look. So you see up here, this is pretty typical. Uh, you know, reduce the screen size. You know, go into full screen. You know, if you want to bring it down to the dock when you're in the reduced. Um, over here, that's the link. When you hit link, really cool feature. So if you have another computer on your wireless network or your home network, whatever, um, and say you have a tractor or, you know, Ableton or something else running, some other music software that has this link capability, that when I hit this one first, when I hit my next link button, it's going to synchronize both computers and both pieces of software over the network, whether that's wired or wireless. It doesn't matter as long as they're on the same network. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this right up here is your quantization button. So when that's turned on, uh, things snap into place when you, for instance, uh, you're putting in a hot cue or anything along those lines. When we look over here, we have all the different views. We have a vertical view. We have the horizontal view, the extended, the stacked view, and then you have the library, of course. I like to run things on the extended view because I can see the most amount of stuff and it just works for my workflow. Um, you can go into four decks, be back in two. Uh, that's your record, so if you want to record something, all you do as you go in there, you type in what it is you want to call it. Record location. We want to get the mix. And then you can tell it where you want to record it to, of course. And then, of course, you just hit record. When you're done, you hit the save. Pretty simple. You have effects. As you notice here, as I turned on these different things, um, they all add up on the screen. So if you want to you know, I don't necessarily need to look at the record any longer. Take that off. And with the effects, you have three effects. Each one has a drop down menu and has all the effects listed. So you can kind of set the effect that you want and then you can run like three effects at a time. And you have, you know, how long you want the uh, the effect to go for, how many beats. This over here says, which channel do you put that effect on? So channel one, channel two, three or four. Or the master. And of course, you can go into a single effect unit. And uh, so now you can have just, so let's take like a delay for instance. And you have the delay on, that's to wet dry, and then it can be like a reverse delay. You can adjust the feedback, you can adjust the loop length, whether it's a loop on or off, uh, the high pass filter. And of course, once again, you want it timed, you know, half. So that just gives you an idea. I'm not going to get too much into effects because you can kind of play around with that yourself. And then, of course, there's a sampler, and that's a whole nother video in itself, the way the sampler works, because I personally don't really make much use of the sampler because it is a little bit different. But it does have uh, the ability to link now, so I'll have to play around again because that was one of my big deals that uh, you couldn't really load things up and always be very secure. They're going to be synchronized in, and the workflow on a DDJ SX2 just didn't work out well with this thing. So let's get rid of the sampler, get rid of the effects. Over here is the master level. Um, if you want to, there's your MIDI. So if you're hitting like a MIDI command on the controller, you can assign, you can enable the MIDI assignment. So when enabled, you can go in there and actually MIDI map stuff. So that brings up another good one too. You have uh, the playback shortcuts. By turning this on, what this allows you to do is you can look at all the shortcuts, but every time you hover over something, it tells you exactly what it is you're looking at. You know, CPU meter, for instance. And this is going to be your best friend. If you don't know Serato, 
this is definitely the way to go. All you got to do is just look here. There's track display. It tells you all the different things that you're looking at. Saves me from having to do each and every little thing here. So we're going to hop out of here for a second and just look real quickly here at these are your hot cues up here. So I have a hot cue in my first one. Every time I hit it, you see it's going. If I want to add a second hot cue in, I can literally go there and on my controller, I just hit the pad or on here, I can just hit the add. If I want to delete a hot cue, that's what the X is for. Adds it, removes it. These are your loop cues. You can scroll down and you can see all of that as well too. This is your loop lengths that you have here. So you can see all the loop lengths. It goes right down to like one eighth quarter. You can go right up to uh, 32 if you like as well too. That ejects the song. And I forget what that does, but the great thing, like I said, if I go here, I can come over and it's a sensor. That's exactly what it is. I have the sensor button on the SX2, so I don't really ever look at it on screen, but that's exactly what it's for. Of course, you got your output level for the track. So when you're looking at that, you can see, you know, if one track is as loud as the next track coming in, you can adjust your trim if you need to. And of course, there's your main waveform display. And there's a beat match display. So uh, uh, you can see right here, it says that it accentuates the beats in the track so they can easily be matched. When the two tracks are best matched, the markers will align. Um, you have over here your album art. You can go look at your album art or you can turn that off and go to your simple mode and just have your list. There's smart crates and there's making crates. So crates is all about having a playlist. And if you have a playlist, it makes things a lot simpler because you can kind of sort things out. Um, the smart crates, what's really cool, we're going to go into that for a second. Let me just turn off that mode and go into a smart crate. Smart crates are about making a crate that follows a set of rules. So I can say I want something that has the genre contains techno but I can also say that I want something that I want techno that is greater than 126 and I can keep adding rules to that as well too we're gonna save just like this there's my smart crate I can click on it and what it's done is it's already looked through my playlist and it's pulled out everything that was labeled techno in the genre that was higher than that. Not much, but it still did the trick. And every time I add into my collection, it's going to keep adding in there as well, too. So I can just click on the, uh, do a double click where it says create one and say techno 126 and up. And I can load it in, and there it is. So that's a pretty nice way to, uh, do things as you can see here in my techno you can add in sub crates so I've got my main there's all the techno there's the sub crates of all my different types of techno that I have in here one of the other nice things too just like any other program you can adjust the columns that you look at you can click on a column you can drag that column and move it around so you can kind of set things up the way that you want you might just want to see the song name, the key, and the length. Um, you can hit your control, click, and everything that's got a check mark is what's in the column. And if I want, I can take off like the length, but the length is kind of important to know. So I'm going to put that back on. But album, for instance, I don't really need to know the album. The genre, I don't really need to know the genre either because I know this is all techno. Now, what's interesting about this, as you see, the genre says other, right? 
I can select everything here. Go in there. And let's see how do I do this again. Let's see if that does it. Right, so all I did was go in there, double click, type in tech, no, and it says, do you want to edit all 87? Sure. Get a little spinny wheel there. And voila, nice and easy. It's now tagged all my tech note appropriately. I can go in here and I can go just click it and sort it by the year as well too. Because it says it's 23 underground techno, but I don't know why. We're seeing things of like 2015. And as you can see at the bottom here, it's writing all the tags to all those uh, MP3s, all the 83 of them. So it's writing right to the file to let it know it's techno. So that's a pretty handy feature as well, too. Um, if we look up here, where you look at the setup, so in your DJ preferences, playback keys, use shift. Mm, don't really want to. So that means you'd have to hold down the shift key and hit play. Not really the way I want to do my stuff. Um, auto gain. You know what? You can use it. Uh, most of my tracks are all about the same level. Or, you know, I sometimes I'll just adjust it myself with my my uh, gains. So I'd rather do it than have the software do it. Lock the playing deck, so if a deck's playing, you can't do anything. So you can't load into it, which makes sense. Uh, sort cues and loops chronologically. Mm, I kind of like to just put them where I want to put them, because you might want to have your hot cue one place for particular because of the way you finger jump, for instance. Uh, hot cues are enabled. Track end warning is nice, so let you know when you're getting near the end. Disable the needle search during playback, because you don't want to accidentally hit that needle search while the song's playing. And I like to show beat jump controls because on the pads you can um, essentially, you know, set them up and you can jump forward and back by, you know, preset amounts of uh, bars. What else do we have here? Uh, play from start, uh, instant doubles. So that's a nice one too. If you uh, have a track in one deck and you load the same track in the next deck, it does instant doubles on it, which means it'll start it from the exact place where the other tracks already playing. You can tell this thing to play from the first cue point. So if you set your first cue point up at the, where you want it to be, for instance, it'll set it from there. Virtual deck speed can go faster or slower. I don't see the purpose of that. I don't really know. Um, you want to set your recording to record in WAF, not AIFF. Um, you can go 24-bit. is kind of you don't really need to, but I do anyways. Uh, sync mode. You can turn sync off if you're old school. You don't really care about beat grids and stuff, and you do a lot of hip hop, and you know sync just doesn't do anything for you. Simple sync will match the BPM in transients or beat grids, and of course, smart sync press uh, sets master deck. Second sync matches the BPM in the beat grid phase. So I'm usually on smart sync myself. You can maintain sync on track load. So as soon as you load the track, it'll just automatically sync right over. So that's kind of like cheating to the next degree, but it works for some guys. Um, what do we got here? So quantization, I showed you that quantization button at the corner there. You can set your quantization for how you want it because maybe you're doing hip hop, you want to have a little bit of swing. So when, you're, when you hit your hot cues, you don't want them to be exactly quantized and you want to have a little bit of swing so you can adjust that how you like um, most computers I've seen five seconds seems to be a good latency setup so that means it's five milliseconds from the point that you hit the button on your controller to the point the computer understands that you just hit the button anything more than 15 seconds is no good and most drummers over I, they say about like 10 to 15 seconds they can start to understand and hear it but most people won't. You can show your iTunes library. I'm going to take that off. Uh, protect your library from doing anything to it. Or uh, center on selected song. Include sub, sub crate tracks. 
you can reset your plate tracks on exit. Uh, you can change the color of the tracks that have been played. You can adjust the size of your text. If you're blind, you can turn it up a little bit. or. But then again, of course, you lose screen size too, right? Uh, you can show the tempo match and display. I'm going to show you what that is in a second. Um, EQ colored waveforms. So when you like turn down the uh, EQ, the waveform changes color. Um, color key display. You show everything as a Camelot. That's on for the keys, which is a whole nother video. I don't want to send any anonymous data to Serato, and I don't do use pulse lockers, so I can take that off. Mixer, EQ boost, let's say 12. Um, you can adjust. You can adjust the up fader. Well, you can on the up fader on your uh, controller. So you know, if you're a scratch guy, you want to do tricks. You can do like a fast up fader curve. So it just it's like instantly on, right? But I'm not that guy, so I'll leave it where it default. And we're going to the effects, and of course you can get more effects, or you can have your use your favorite effects list. And just add in the ones that you like. So say I'm gonna add in an echo, a reverb. Do a repeater. Break echo. Echo out. Combo fade echoes. So that way there when you go through, when you're playing, you're not sitting there having to dig through like a million different effects that you're never going to use, right? Um, here's where you do all your uh, stuff for adding extra MIDI controllers. And these are all the expansion packs that you can get. So you, we can enable Serato Video because I did purchase it. And uh, the Serato Remote too. I have Serato Remote, so that means that the remote is of the iPad app. Don't really use it much. It's cool. I just don't personally use it myself. So we'll get out of here, and I'm going to show you. Uh, let's find something here. Hopefully that YouTube's not going to pick up on too badly. So I'm just going to run some kind of loops here just to kind of get some stuff going. So you can see that moving along there, because it's in blue, that means I'm on a loop. You can see over here, I'm on a 32 bar loop. On my controller, I can cut my loop down. I'm gonna scroll through, I'm gonna load up another track here. Now one of the interesting things you're gonna see here, if I hit the sync and it's gray, what that means is uh, when I hit my play button, it's gonna be like, snap right in or it should and of course as I do the video it doesn't do it so I have to do a little adjustment pretty much see the the idea here I would hope that you know as you see these lines perfectly lined up you know everything's all synchronized right so then we can go into four decks now one of my decks happens to be on the microphone here so we're going to go into the third deck go down here and I can take a song and I can just drag it in. Synchronize that up. I've got the filter on right now.
So yeah, that's about all I can really say about this software. It's um, not too complicated to use, just takes a little bit of practice. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to give me a shout, uh, leave a comment. You know what, I try to get back to people as quickly as possible. You can also reach me at tractorguy at gmail.com. Hopefully this has kind of helped out a little bit. Um, a couple things I didn't go over. I didn't really go over some of the obvious things here about like the files, for instance. So, you know, when you hit file, that's seeing basically like explore. You know what I mean? You're going in there and you're seeing all your music. So if I want to take that classic house, for instance, or uh, we'll take this electro one because I know it's not over there. And I can just drag that over to the side here. And when I pop it in, it's going to make a playlist out of it. Very simple. Now, the one thing I didn't show you guys is um, when you analyze music. Now, if I turn off my controller, it's basically going to, I'm going to lose the mic. But when you turn it off, you go into a one deck mode. And right here in the top, you're going to see where it says analyze files. So you can highlight all your files by doing like a command A. And then you take it and you drag it up into the spot that you'll see right there that says analyze files. And that'll analyze everything for you. But as soon as you import music in, it automatically starts analyzing anyways as well too. Hit and space bar gets you into your uh, library mode and hit and space bar gets you back out. So guys, that's it. I don't know what else to talk about. I was trying to make this kind of brief and informative. Hopefully it hasn't been too long for you. And uh, we'll turn the music off here, and I'm going to sign out. And hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. And like I said, if you have any questions, let me know, and I will try and answer them for you and help you guys out. Talk to you guys soon.